Hey everyone, this is Jay and we're doing another video on um, the Steam Deck docked and this is how to get over 60 frames per second uh, through an external monitor. Alright, so we're on gaming mode using an external monitor here and what I realized is in terms of choices um, you we are really limited in terms of the options we have so you can do automatic scaling and it will scale to 1080p which is the native resolution of this monitor and you can change the brightness too but you cannot control the refresh rate um, and I was able to determine that by launching the UFO test online so let me see here UFO and let me get rid of the overlay here real quick and maximize this there it is 60 frames per second um, this is a 144 Hertz monitor but I connected it by HDMI so it should run up to 120 Hertz maximum and we're able to take advantage of that by launching things through desktop mode so go to power switch to desktop mode and this is more of a full-fledged experience so to speak so this is more of an actual Linux computer and going back to that website let's see UFO test maximize there it is 120 frames per second so if you're going to be running games that can actually hit that high frame rate, I would highly suggest running it or launching it through desktop mode. And I will give you an example of that with uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Another way to see your screen refresh rate is by going to settings and display and monitor click your display and right here it says 120 Hertz um, before I launch Mass Effect Legendary Edition I'm gonna install an overlay because um, the Steam overlay doesn't work on desktop mode so there's one called Mango HUD, M Mango HUD. there it is install and while that's installing I'm gonna launch Steam Mass Effect here, go to Properties and Launch Options. You want to type Mango HUD equals one, percentage, command, percentage. And close that. Let's launch Mass Effect. And if everything goes smoothly, we should be able to see our frames per second on the top left. If this is your first time installing or loading Mass Effect Legendary Edition, it may even install the uh, Vulcan shaders and that can take a minute or two. And it may also install Origin if you don't have any Origin games yet. All right, so top left, you can see the overlay. It says 23% for GPU usage. Um, what I also notice is if you have a, an ex a controller, it has no effect on this launcher. But if you have a PS4 or a PS5 controller, the DualShock, DualSense, can use this as your mouse press and then resume or you can use the controller on your Steam Deck and once it actually launches the game the controller will now work um, let's see I think I have VSync on so we're gonna have to take that off so that this frame per second is not capped
All right, so we're now in Mass Effect 1. I'm using the controller to control it. And... We're past the start menu and actually loaded the game already. So I'm seeing 81, 83 frames per second. And the monitor should now be able to actually take advantage of that. It's not capped at 60. And let me play a little bit here. This is the Mass Effect 1 Remastered Edition and there's a lot of quality of life updates for this. Um, as well as graphical updates. What do you need, Admiral? There's an Alliance training ground where we test weapons and technology and live fire simulations. One of the VIs we use to simulate enemy tactics in the drills is no longer responding to our override commands. It's gone rogue. Just tell me how to stop it, Admiral. We need you to fight your way through the training ground of the VI core and manually disable it. Don't worry, Admiral. I'll take that thing out. I know Spectre's answered the council, but you're still human. One last thing I want to show is the graphics settings. So, 1080p, dynamic shadows on. I don't like motion blur, so I turned that off. Frame capped at 120. You can actually change that to 240, but it wouldn't matter. Everything else is on. And let's turn... Commander Shepard? Kalisa Benson and Al Jelani, Westerlin News. Would you answer a few questions for our viewers? What do you want to know? Loading screens are 30 frames per second. So I guess that's just a video. Alright, so we're getting upwards of 70 no, I'm frames per second. Commander, any word on my missing men? I'm not sure how to tell you this, Admiral. Your men were killed by a thresher bomb. Threshable? That's not... My men wouldn't just stumble into a thresher nest. Not the entire unit. Somebody lured them there with an Alliance distress beacon. Any news? Did you find my brother yet? I found your brother's body. His ship was attacked by privateers. Willem's dead? When his ship dropped out of contact, I just knew. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Please excuse me. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna skip the video ahead. We're gonna get into some firefight. There's the art. So 1080p and still getting about 60 frames, not too shabby for a 15 watt device. Get out! <laughs> Let's see.
All right, so hopefully you guys were able to see the frame rates and you know indoors there's less things less things for the game to load so obviously it's going to be higher frame rate um, this setup is works really well you know you have a high refresh rate monitor and the steam deck is capped at 60 hertz on its internal display so if you wanted to take advantage of games that can you know go that can have higher than 60 uh, frames per second then there you go that's one solution um, I would say that you know it's not gonna work for all games because games like cyberpunk obviously it's hard to run and it's not even gonna reach uh, you know past 60 frames but older games and remasters or really well optimized games you'll see upwards of 80 90 frames per second and this is one of them um, on its own, the deck is really a, a, a great device, especially that it's only 15 watts. And one last thing I'm gonna show is, um, let me save this real quick, is how to get 144 hertz on these kinds of displays. So obviously I'm capped at 120 because that's just the HDMI limitation. Um, and if I wanted to take advantage of 144, I would have to get a DisplayPort cable. Um, and one way to do that is by having a USB-C DisplayPort cable, which is this one. USB-C to USB-C DisplayPort cable. So um, you cannot just unplug this and then plug in the, uh, the USB-C DisplayPort. And I'll show you why. So I'm gonna unplug um, the dock. I'm gonna plug in the USB-C DisplayPort cable and uh, do it for the Steam Deck as well. It'll work. Um, and now you're actually charging the Steam Deck through the power supply of the monitor. So flicker and then it'll switch over to the monitor. And, or it'll say no signal. So let me try that again. Um, okay, I think I know what's causing it. So the power from the monitor uh, should now be supplied through the Steam Deck. So now it's going to go in. So there it goes. Um, and I don't know if you saw up here, it says 1920 by 1080 at 144 hertz. And as you can see, it's dim meaning we have to change the brightness on the monitor itself. So brightness, I can just bump this up. So the monitor now is actually getting power from the Steam Deck. And I had to unplug the power from the power adapter to the monitor because it's confusing the monitor. Um, but now I can actually replug it. So here we go, this is the power cable for the monitor and the battery logo, let's see if it starts charging. Where are you, battery logo? Oh, there we go, Bat battery and brightness. So it has that being charged, uh, or fully charged, being charged icon to it. Um, so I'm guessing that's the, uh, the weight that you would want to plug in the, ex well, this specific external monitor. Plug in the Steam Deck first, let it load, and then plug in the power supply so that you're supplying power to the Steam Deck. Um, what, what I did lose is my dock, obviously, right? So if you have a USB-C, I guess, splitter that can do, you know, multiple USB-C ports or USB-A uh, ports and another USB-C display port, then that would work. Um, let me try to look for one on Amazon and I'll link it in the description. I'm pretty sure they have those um, USB-C hubs. So the whole point of this was to see if it can do 144 hertz now since we're doing DisplayPort. Alright, so go back to the UFO test, maximize this, and actually it was my first point. You cannot just plug it in like that, right? So it's gonna go half rate, so it's about 60, 65, 
So what you have to do is either restart or just switch back to gaming mode and switch to desktop mode. It'll still be at 60 hertz, by the way, if you're on gaming mode with DisplayPort, so don't even bother. Um, so it's it's a little bit of a back and forth, but once you selected your choice of cable, either HDMI or DisplayPort, then you only really need to do that once. So I'm switching back to desktop mode. Top right, you'll see it say 144 hertz. If I go to settings and I go to display and monitor, um, you have to click this and it'll say 144 hertz. See? Now, going back to UFO test, frame rate, there we go, 144 hertz. So, doing it this way is another workaround. Um, doing, having the dock with uh, HDMI, you're limited to 120 hertz, but really 120 hertz for a device like this is still really high. Um, plus you have all those extra ports. And that should do it for the video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys uh, learned a few things here and there. And see you in the next one. Bye.